Hey everybody, it is time for Cultivating Intimacy. My name is Kazim Bebena, and it is Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. And it has, been a, it has been a rainy Atlanta day, but it's all good. I kind of like the rain, a little overcast, a little cooler, thank goodness. So happy to be here, happy to be here with you all on Tuesday. Again, this is Cultivating Intimacy. My name is Kazim Bebena, also known as the Heart Whisperer, uh, certified holistic practitioner and intimacy coach. And we will be going over the love languages again, continuing to go over the love languages. I'm going to do a little something a little bit different this time. Hope you all enjoy it. Something that's been on my spirit for quite some time, or should I say there's something that spirit has put on my consciousness for quite some time. I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing it with you all. I'm going to let us uh, let some more people <clears throat> connect here. Um, letting some people connect and join before I start to get too deep into it. Got a couple of special announcements to make. A couple of special announcements to make. So I'm going to give people a couple minutes to get joined up in here. All right, let me see what we got here. <clears throat> hey, Garrett, thank you for joining up. I had tagged some folks. Going to give it a few minutes here. So this is the book that we're going to be going over again, Well, or that I'm referencing, rather. Let me see. This is the book that I've been referencing this entire time. Uh, this is the love languages. If I can get my perspective together here, there we go. It's like a mirror, huh? All right. The love, the five love languages by Gary Chapman. It's a fantastic book. I have been referencing this pretty much the entire time that I've been doing this segment or this series on the five love languages. So again, we're just going to uh, 930 tonight. Short and sweet. I'm going to make it from 9:30, uh, from 9 until 9:30. From now on, we're going to keep it short and sweet. Hit you hard and fast. Hopefully, fill you up and get you there. So I'm going to give it a few more moments, and then I'm going to get into it because I don't want to waste. I don't want to waste time. For those that, of you that uh, may be tuning in <clears throat> for the first time. So again, this is Love Languages, uh, the series that uh, I am touching on on the show that you're tuned into, which is Cultivating Intimacy. Again, my name is Kazimbe Abena, known as the Heart Whisperer, an intimacy coach and certified holistic practitioner. I'm going to go ahead and jump on into this. All right, so we have been talking about the five love languages for the last few weeks. We've been talking about, just as a recap, the five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, gifts, and physical touch. Those are the five. And the whole purpose, I want us to get back to basics, get back to love here. The whole purpose in the five love languages is to establish a sense of peace and love and security for you and your mate. Let's not forget that. Let's not, let's not forget of why we are doing this. What's the most important thing that we're trying to accomplish here? The five love languages are simply a tool that can help us, those of us that are in relationships, and I think really those of us that are just uh, relating to other people, whether it's a monogamous one-on-one -on -one relationship, whether it's polyamory, whether it's an open relationship, no matter what it is, if we are relating to another human being, I think these are some very, very valuable tools to have. So the five love languages is teaching us how to really communicate love in action 
to someone else. And also for us to know what we love and what makes us feel loved and makes us feel secure and makes us feel supported as well. This is really important because when we feel love and when we feel supported, we are obviously able to give more and we're also able to live more freely and expand. So we know this is true uh, because what does fear do? Fear contracts. When you're afraid, you do this. You're guarded. I don't know what's going to happen to me, so let me, let me put up my defenses. Let me guard myself. So this is an act of insecurity, or this is an act of protection. I've got to guard myself. So fear is a constricting thing. It's a constricting thing. Love, on the other hand, hey, Stacy. Love, on the other hand, is just the opposite. Love is an expansive, love is an enveloping type of energy. It is a connective type of energy. So when you feel loved, when you feel supported, when you feel uh, that you are being uh, respected and that you are being uh, regarded as a human being and supporting who you are, you, uh, you do this. You relax, you expand, you put down your guard. Why? Well, because there's no need to have your guard up in the first place because you don't feel that you're threatened. If you're in a relationship that, that is supporting you, where you feel supported, there's no need to feel fearful. Fear, fear from what? Fear of what? You're good. You're good. So that's really, really important. Really, really important to keep in mind that that's ultimately the goal of how we want to relate to one another is in a way where we can each be at a place where we feel secure enough, safe enough, loved enough to drop our guards, to drop our guards, to express ourselves, and to not feel attacked in the process. Uh, now, we've talked about vulnerability a few times here as well. And I want to say that being vulnerable, even if these things are in place, the feeling of being vulnerable uh, can still exist, and that's fine. And that's, that's perfectly fine. And what that means, simply, is that we know that we are exposing ourselves. We know that we are exposing ourselves to possible pay too wet. Thanks for joining. We know that we are exposing, our, exposing ourselves to a possible danger, a possible danger. But if you are in a secure relationship, then although in your mind it may feel that way, you'll know from your action and being in the present moment that once you expose yourself or say what you need to say or communicate what's on your heart, and once love comes back, that feeling of vulnerability will dissolve. It will dissolve. I want to say something else in terms of how we operate as human beings and something that I have picked up from doing workshops on intimacy, workshops on synergetic BDSM. And that is this. It has become very clear to me that at the core of our being, in our purest part, in our humanness, in our humanity, exists a piece of us, a large piece of us that wants to love and be loved. There is no question about that. There is no question. No one, no one can convince me otherwise. We know this. Maslow's hierarchy of needs supports this. Everyone wants to feel wanted and loved. So if we know that, if we know that that's the default switch, then we know that we, when we convince ourselves that we are not loved or, that, or when we convince ourselves to not do something that's out of love, then we're going against the grain of our natural inclination and of our natural um, ability and of our natural uh, 
expression. And I think that's really, really important to, to understand. Uh, in other words, we don't have to force it to be loved. It's not an effort to want to love someone. Uh, it shouldn't be an effort. Now, particularly, there may be, now I'm not saying that it's, it's a relationship does not require effort. But what I am saying is that in the core of our being, if we wiped away all the hate, all the hurt, all the fears that have been imposed upon us from our circumstances and our experiences, that in the core of that will be love. The core of that will be love. And what I have found from doing workshops on intimacy and synergetic BDSM, which involves connection and all these sorts of things, is that we want to love. That, 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 that desire and that action of love, that energy of love is readily available. It's there. But we block it with our thoughts of fear. We block it with our thoughts of shame. We block it with our thoughts and feelings of guilt. We block it with our mind. And what I want to say to that is, yes, our minds are obviously important to assess situations, to synthesize and compartmentalize information, uh, to figure things out cognitively, et cetera. It's important. But decisions, decisions should be made with the gut. Because if, if we don't do that, then we are simply prisoners of our experiences which are stuck in our heads. And often the results of a lot of these experiences can be thoughts of fear or feelings of fear or circumstances of fear which we have developed from a specific thought pattern. So I really want to encourage us to, when we make a decision, to not make a decision with our mind, to allow the facts to go through our heads, but then let it stop, take something into consideration, be present in the moment, take a deep breath, take a few deep breaths, be in the moment, get settled, get centered, get grounded, and then check in with your gut and ask yourself the question, how does this feel? If I were to do such and such, how would it feel to me? How would it feel? Would I feel good about it? Do I want to do it? And sometimes it takes a certain amount of bravery to step forward and to do things anyway. And that's okay. That's fine. But I believe that if ultimately we operate out of love, that we are operating out of our God self, our higher self, our truth. I am not saying that you don't need to protect yourself. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that we don't need to assess situations and people. I'm not saying that we walk around, uh, you know, with our heart on our sleeve, so to speak. Some people would. I think there are times that we have to, quote unquote, be guarded. I think there are times that we have to do that. But I think that if we, if we make it a habit, that that heart muscle will atrophy. And what used to be a default switch, it still may be a default switch, but it's just not going to be nearly as strong. It's not going to be nearly as strong. All of a sudden, we're not going to know what it means to really receive love or to really give it because we've been in our head so much. And all of a sudden, our existence has gone from a heart-centered existence to a head existence where we're questioning everything and everyone so much to the fact that it, it now debilitates us to the degree that it stifles us to the degree that it affects our connections with people. And that can end up being a serious problem. It can lead to isolation, which can lead to depression. Hey, Tracy, thanks for joining. 
which can lead to depression, which can, which can lead to anger, which can lead to angst, which can lead to a host of unwanted mental ills. Not to mention just some simple social uh, awkwardness where we don't know how to connect, we don't know how to communicate. We're not comfortable speaking our truths. So I really, really want to encourage us to, as much as you can, operate from your heart center and check in with your gut when you make a decision. Check in with your gut, not your head, your gut. Think about a particular incident or something that you want to do and then check in with your gut. See how you feel about it. Not so much what you think, but how do you feel? How do you feel? How does your gut feel about something? How does your gut feel? Now that I've got a couple of people on the line, I want to point out uh, a friend of mine. I've got some candles here, and I hate the fact that wax ran down and kind of soiled this a little bit, but these are fantastic candles. These are candles from a friend of mine and just smells phenomenal. Uh, Sherilyn Wheeler and her brand is naturally for you, naturally for you. She does phenomenal candles. I want to encourage you to uh, definitely patronize her. These candles smell fantastic. They are soy based. Uh, and uh, she does wonderful work. She does uh, soaps, she does candles, she does oils as well. She does teas. Uh, she does uh, yoni steaming and also lingam steaming. So. She does a host of things, so definitely check her out. In my uh, in my post, I have also listed her website, which is naturally naturallyforyousoaps.com. Naturallyforyousoaps.com. So it's naturally for you. Check it out. Pardon the blemish <laughs> on the label. Uh, I love these these things so much. I think it kind of spilled over as I was transporting it. But these are fantastic soaps. I mean, they're just, they're awesome. Uh, and so much so that I can't even express what type of uh, scent this is. I just know that I love it. It's like a green, um, fresh scent. Some lemongrass in there. It's just phenomenal. So... Naturally for you, uh, Sherilyn Wheeler. Definitely check him out. Want to give her a shout out. All right. Also, um, in terms of uh, those of you who want to get deeper into uh, connecting on a any on any an emotional and energetic level, uh, in having a more intimate exchange. I'm having another BDSM, Synergetic BDSM workshop. It's going to be Saturday of this month, August 26th, from 5 p.m. to uh, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at, uh, hey, Riss, at Next Step Resource Center. That's 939 Cleveland Avenue in East Point. And I am actually going to see if I can pull up. I should have posted uh, that event here for you guys to see. But so that is August 26th, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. We'll be doing, I'll be doing Synergetic BDSM. It is a form of BDSM, 50 Shades of Grey, without all the neurosis and all the psychosis. This is positive. <laughs> This is a positive form of BDSM that is actually healing, and I teach you how to use energetic methods for healing, uh, for love, for a deeper connection, for peace, and just to have fun and explore some things with your mate uh, that really can connect you deeper and allow you all to support each other more with tenderness and love. So that is going to be August 26th. Then October 11th through October 17th, 
I'll be presenting at a retreat in Destin, Florida, by uh, a retreat uh, put on by Karen and Brian Craig called the Art of Sacred Sexuality Retreat. And this will be my third time presenting. Brian and Karen Craig put on a phenomenal, safe, educational, spiritual, and sacred retreat revolving around uh, sensuality, sexuality, and connection. And I highly, highly, highly recommend you attend. I guarantee it will change your life. Uh, that is also on my homepage for Kazimbe Advan. It's also on my homepage as well, as is my event at the end of this month on the 26th. So definitely check that out. As a matter of fact, hey, Marvin and, and Laurent, what's happening now? Good to see you guys. Um, uh, I will also be doing a uh, an interview tomorrow night with Brian and Karen uh, as a precursor to this uh, retreat tomorrow night, 8 p.m., um, here on Facebook. So check that out as well. Check that out as well. Just want to tell you all about that. Again, for those who just joined, I want to give a shout out again. Sherilyn Wheeler does some fantastic uh, soaps and candles and oils. And her brand is called Naturally For You. I have put her website up in the, excuse me, description description of this uh this particular broadcast tonight her website is naturally for you soaps.com fantastic stuff the soaps are incredible seriously I, I love them i'm a big scent guy so i love it and she does sense that you don't typically smell other places and they're soy based they're natural they're just fantastic so definitely check her out definitely check her out she is actually atlanta based she's in lawrenceville in here just outside of atlanta so definitely check her out if you're here Give her some, give her some love, patronize her. All right. So we were talking about just the importance of opening up the heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. How um, at the core of our being, we want to be open. We want to love and be loved. There have been many, many psychological studies over the years that have shown this and proven this. But as I said, the thing that stops us is our mind. And we are, we are, particularly in the West, we're making too many mistakes by allowing the mind to make our decisions. And we should not do that. We want to make the decisions with our gut. We want to see how we feel about a situation. We want to stop the mind. We want to get centered. We want to get centered because oftentimes there can be a lot of thoughts that can be going in and out. And those thoughts may not be ours. We may be picking things up from around us, our friends, our environment, from the past, who knows? Get centered, take some deep breaths, sit still and see how you feel about a situation. See how you feel about giving your heart. See how you feel about receiving. See how you feel about it. Hello, Tia. Yes, it does mean that uh, sometimes you it does need to be known you need to protect yourself, absolutely. But what I'm saying here is don't automatically, don't let your default switch uh, be a mind, a mental decision, because often we're caught up in our experiences and we've developed a way of thinking, a cognitive pathway that is really uh, uh, that is really steeped and entrenched in fear and or anger or hurt or pain. So you want to get to a place where you allow your gut to tell you how you feel about a situation and then move on it that way. Move on it that way. All right, so if anyone has any, any comments or questions, please ask. I am here to, of course, intuit any responses to your questions, any questions about relationships and the relationship that you have now that you'd like a, a response to, um, let me know. Uh, also, in terms of opening up the heart space, because I have met so many people that need that work done, I am actually providing. I'm offering a gift tonight of a session with me, long distance remote session. We're going to do uh, half of it will be coaching, uh, about an hour to an hour and a half, and half of it will be energy work. We're gonna work on opening up your heart so that you can receive love, so you can give love, so you can feel better about yourself. Hey, Rita. Um, and just uh, experience more joy 
and more openness and more abundance in life. So if we are guarded like this, it all, not only means that we are not getting love, but we're not receiving love. And we're not only receiving love, we're not receiving anything that the universe has to, has to offer us, wants to give us, because we're too guarded and we're too closed. So when you open up the heart, you really open up not only yourself to love, but to receive the blessings of the universe, period. Period, because you are open, you are open to receive. Now, when that happens, of course, we do need to make better decisions in terms of where we spend our time, who we spend our time around, what we spend our time doing. We wanna make sure that we are cultivating more joy and, and laughter and fun in our lives. We wanna make sure that we are helping people. Uh, we wanna make sure that that, that reciprocity is, is, is continually, continually in motion. But ultimately, we want to be open. We want to be open so that we can give and receive. So we want to be open. All right, folks. Well, it is almost 930. And as I said, I'm going to make this. I'm doing this from 9 to 930 now, keeping it short and sweet. So tell your friends, tell your family. <laughs> Definitely share it. And as always, I will be back next Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If anyone has any comments, concerns, questions about the relationship, are uh, they stuck in a rut, they're wondering about someone they like some relationship advice, please uh, let me know. This is your time now. You got a few minutes to, to let me know to ask your question. I'll be happy to respond here. Don't be shy. It all stays here. It's all good. And let me know. Let me know. Again, uh, I am offering, uh, and this will this will go till uh, I'll offer this until 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Uh, this offer of eighty-five dollars for an hour session that involves coach hour to hour and a half session that involves coaching and energy work, long distance to open up the heart to give and receive abundance and love and joy. All right, I'm going to say this, if no one has any comments or questions. Oftentimes we are prisoners of our past experiences and we let those define us. Um, and you can tell that if you listen to the things that you say. I'm not going to do that because the last time I did that, A and B happened. Well, that's not how it is for me. When I do such and such, this always happens. There is, it is important to guard yourself, I understand that. But again, we want to be, we want to be smart and we, we want to be searching for circumstances and experiences that will allow us to open up as opposed to contract. And I spoke about this earlier here, that fear contracts. So fear contracts, fear closes. Love opens up and expands. Expanding is a more healthy act because it allows you to give and receive. Contraction is necessary, but we don't want contraction, i.e. fear, to be our default switch. And for too many of us, it is. And I can actually speak from experience, so I know how that feels because I've been there. I've been there. So what I want to leave you all with is this. With the five love languages, the principles, again, of words of affirmation, uh, quiet uh, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and gifts, I want you to use those tools to give love to those people around you so that they feel supported and also to ask for what you need to feel supported and loved. When that happens, both people can expand. There is reciprocity, there is honesty, there is support, there is forgiveness, and there's love and there's joy. So I really, really want to encourage you all to use these things at your disposal, these tools. 
Again, if you're looking to figure out what your love language is, it's very simple. Simply go to Google or any search engine and type in the five love languages PDF. Once you are there, you can actually download it. A PDF will mean that it'll be a downloadable PDF version for you. Download it on your computer. It's 30 questions. You can answer it anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes, and you'll find out. I would say, you know, check out the top two. If you can't just choose, if you can't uh, choose one, then just choose a, a, a top two, the top two, and they'll it'll be there for you to score and everything like that. It's self-explanatory. All right, with that, I want to thank everybody for joining. Again, my name is Kazimbe Abena. This has been Cultivating Intimacy. I am a heart whisperer and the uh, the heart whisperer and uh, an intimacy uh, coach and certified holistic practitioner. I do this every Tuesday, 9 p.m. EST. Again, a quick recap on things coming up. Uh, the 26th of this month here in Atlanta, Georgia, I will be doing Synergetic BDSM Workshop. It's my form of BDSM that requires more intimacy or actually actually uh, inspires more intimacy, trust, and connection, and sensuality, and also energy work and energy movement and cultivation. And also, um, I want you all to check out uh, the Sacred Sexuality Retreat by Brian and Karen Craig, October 11th through the 17th of this year. Uh, it is going to be fantastic. It's going to be in Destin, Florida. I'll be presenting there as well. It is a phenomenal retreat of safety and love and respect and connection and sacredness. It's fantastic. So with, without any further ado, have a great evening. Thank you for joining up. I really appreciate everyone for joining. Great to see you. And I hope to see you again next week, and please spread the word. Peace and love to you. Blessings. Bye-bye.